Hi, welcome to my knitting channel. My name is Sharmila and I'm coming to you from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. On Instagram, you can find me as July Chick Knits and on Ravelry as July Chick. We're going to start off by talking about my um, finished object, which is the Fortune Sweater by Petite Knits. I knit this for my daughter in all her favorite colors and um, it's come out really beautifully. We're really happy with it. And here it is. Um, there it's a uh, long sleeve. Um, it is the second size in the pattern. Um, it's called the fortune sweater because it has an all over lace uh, detail of these four leaf clovers that you can see. It's on, it carries along the sleeve and the back of the sweater as well. Um, and as you can see, I've faded it and also I've speckled it and I faded it. Um, all the projects on Ravelry that I've seen of the Fortune sweater, um, it's always knit in a solid color with a uh, fingering held with mohair to get that worsted weight kind of gauge. Um, and I had this, these lovely three skeins of a speckled fade. Uh, I'll get into the yarn in a, in a minute, but um, I, was, I really wanted to knit something special for her. And uh, my daughter and I poured over uh, different sweaters, different designs, uh, different designers to see kind of what she wanted, what she liked. And this is what she decided on. Um, again, the Fortune Sweater by Petit Knit. It has a folded collar which is the first time I've done a folded collar. Um, and I love it. It's the finish is super, super nice on it. It folds, I think you start with the collar and then you knit it together. And uh, then you continue with the body and or the yoke in the body. It's really come out really nicely. Um, raglan sleeves. Um, I made a modification on the sleeves. Um, I think her sleeves in the pattern, I believe they were just knit straight then. You know what, I, I can't remember what the pattern sleeves look like. I can't remember if there were decreases or what, but my, my daughter wanted uh, more of a, like a balloon sleeve end. So I actually, um, uh, I've made another version of the Ranaculus. I know I'm wearing the Ranaculus, but I've made another version with how um, in the pattern she, uh, she kind of does this similar type of sleeve with an I-cord uh, bind off. And that's what I did here. Um, so yeah. It's, I'm happy with the sleeve. I think my daughter might have liked an even more of a puffy kind of ed, end to it, a bit more of a balloon to it, but this is what we ended up with. And, uh, and I think she's, she is happy with it. Um, I, I believe I did a, I think the pattern, I can't remember if the pattern called for a twisted rib, but I did a twisted rib at the bottom. Um, at the waist and um, as I said on the sleeve, I did this eye core detail. And then I'll talk about the yarns. I think that's the only modification I made was, was um, the twisted rib at the bottom. I did... Um, uh, sorry, I'm losing my words today. It's, I did a um, sewn bind off. I'm, I know there's another word for it, uh, but I did the sewn bind off, which is what I normally do in most of my sweaters. And um, the yarns I used were, I'll insert a picture here of the three yarns in their skeins and um, 
I started off on the top with uh, the mint color yarn, which is Cozy Posies, um, Merino Cashmere Nylon Blend, which is called Fancy. Um, it's really, really nice. Um, it's a really nice yarn. It had a nice twist to it. Um, super, super, super nice finish to it. And uh, I think that's what I did for the I-cord bind off as well. I used that. And then the second yarn, which is more of like, a, it's hard to describe this, this color because there's a lot of different colors going on in the second second color of this yarn, but that's the Qing Fiber. Um, it, the color is called Shibuya. Oh, sorry, the first, the top one, the color is called Sassy, this, this kind of minty green, speckled green. The second color is uh, by Qing Fiber Merino Single. It's called Shibuya, and it's, I think it's 100% Merino. Um, and it's this middle section there. And at the bottom, we have, um, sorry, there's a bit of a, yeah, there. It has a bit more blues and purples in it. Um, it's also speckled, and that is, I have the tag here somewhere, yeah. It's La Bien, La um, uh, let's see, Merino single called Tickle. And even though they're three different hand dyers, um, They've really blended so nicely together, as you can see in the, the sleeve. It, it just, it's really blended together really, really beautifully. They all have um, some of the same colors in it, like the pink speckle and uh, like a bit of the neon green speckle. I don't know if you could see it on camera, but all of them have that bit of that neon green and the pink and, oh, it's, it's really, like the finished product is really, really nice, the finished fabric. Um, and of course I held it together with mohair <laughs> and I held it together with um, a Le Petit, Biche Bouche Le Petit Silk uh, Mohair and it is in the color Nude Pink. And this is what that looks like. A very neutral, like with a hint of pink in it. And it really uh, worked well with with um, all the all the colors in it. How I selected the mohair was um, I took the three skeins uh, shopping with me, and uh, I can't remember where I bought it from. My uh, I think it might have been at um, units in Toronto, um, and. Uh, that's where I bought the mohair from, and I used four skeins. This is what I have left. Um, I think this might be half a skein, so maybe uh, three and a half skeins, maybe just over three and a half skeins. Um, and uh, it really gave a really nice all over effect to the sweater. One thing I did want to talk about in the sweater, um, a technique that I've never used before, um, was the Russian join. And I had to use that at the hem um, when I, I first I bound off normally, like the pattern called for. Um, and then I didn't like that bind off because it was flaring and I didn't like the finish of it, which I know I don't like the finish of it. But sometimes because it's quicker, it's, you know, I, I do it, but I know I always like the, the sewn bind off or the Kitchener stitch. Um, so I undid um, the sewn bind off and I did the Kitchener stitch, which of course takes more yarn than called for. Um, and so I didn't have um, enough left. So I had to join yarn. And um, I used the Russian join to join yarn. Um, which is a good way to join yarn if you don't have a lot to join, a lot of yarn to join, um, like a long tail or whatever to, to join. So um, I used it and I was really happy with it. Um, 
and yeah, I, it was it was an interesting technique. If you are interested in it, um, just look it up. I think uh, there's a few YouTube um, videos on showing how to use it, uh, but it was very helpful. So I wanted to talk about what I'm wearing. I'm wearing um, the Ranunculus sweater, which is my favorite thing to knit. It's um, just like I love knitting the yoke, and this is uh, this is knit in. Um, Illimani Sabri, which is a cotton and alpaca uh, blend, and it's held together with uh, mohair, mohair silk uh, by Handmaiden, which is by Fleece Artist, I believe. And um, it's, it's really, really nice and warm and light and lovely. So I uh, wanted to touch on the fact that it's been a month today that um, the Ukraine invasion started. And uh, definitely it's been really heavy. Um, you know, I didn't feel very motivated to knit or do much of anything actually, end of February, uh, March. Um, and then uh, um, I think the beginning of the second week of March, um, uh, I was able to join a few people who were organizing a collection to Ukraine. And so I was um, very good and busy uh, for a few days, um, packing and sorting and collecting um, uh, items that would be useful for refugees and um, maybe might even make their way into Ukraine. Um, and so it was really good to kind of invest my energy um, it kind of got me out of um, the rut or what have you. And um, uh, I felt a little hopeful in, in a tiny, 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 tiny way. Um, and uh, there, there are a few photojournalists who I follow um, on Instagram. I'll um, just insert their names here. And um, it's just, uh, it's, it's awful. That's, it's awful, awful, awful. And uh, it, um, I just, every day I hope and I pray that uh, things will turn. And um, yeah. Um, it did um, warm my heart uh, when, uh, one of these photojournalists that I follow, they actually posted on their Instagram um, a couple of pictures of uh, aid being received in um, in Ukraine, um, and uh, it's it's uh, then there was this other picture which it seems a little uh, it might seem a little silly, but it really uh, brought some some joy to me. Uh, was this picture in a square where um, I think they unpacked one, one um, donation bag and it had um, toys for gifts for kids, sorry, soft toys like stuffies for, for kids. And it was this mess of color and uh, you could see the, the people who unpackaged it, they were just kind of, they had a one lighthearted moment where they're all kind of playing with these toys. I'll, I'm, I hope I can describe it well, but it, it just, you know, um, brought a little bit of whatever joy in that moment that maybe they're feeling happy too by looking at these toys or playing with these toys. And then, you know, of course they're getting all these other um, shipments, which, you know, are more needed items, obviously, but there was just this little bit of spark joy moment. So onto my work in progress. Um, I am knitting the Hayward sweater. It's the second time I'm making this. Um, it's for myself. Um, and here it is. Uh, it's on the needles. Uh, this is the back. Um, I just have the neck on a stitch holder um, and I'm about halfway through the front. Um, it's worked from the bottom up 
this is knit in pieces. Um, so my sleeves are, it might not look like much, but, but it all comes together. Um, this is uh, one of the sleeves. I know it really doesn't look like much now, but it will come together magically. And then this is the other sleeve. Uh, yeah, this is the other sleeve. And it's a raglan sleeve. Uh, so it kind of goes like that. And um, the front and the back are knit separately, but I knit it together um, in the round. And I put a faux seam. Uh, can you see, yeah, there's the faux seam. Um, that's what it looks like on the other side. It's just a pearl ridge. That's all it is. And I think it helps to keep the structure of the garment. Um, and uh, as I said, I've knit this before in a different color. Um, and I, I love this color and I love the sweater. It's probably my most worn sweater, even though um, it is like the sleeves are quite short. Um, so it's not like a winter, winter sweater. It's more like a spring, fall, um, warm, warmer winter day sweater. But, um, I, I wear it a lot. It's just a really, the yarn is great after it's washed. It, it really wears really well. Um, and I, this is the color, uh, this is the yarn. It's the Brooklyn Tweed Loft. Uh, in the colorway embers and um, I think before I knit it in a gray color I'm not sure which color it says on my Ravelry page but um oops oh no I think I knit it in snowbound that it's like a very light gray color um, and so I chose this color and I'm really I'm really liking it it'll go great with jeans and and stuff it's it's um yeah, so this, this I think I should be done in another couple of days, I should be done in the front. Um, it's just the piecing it together is going to take a bit of time. Because you got to just like sit down and do it, right? <laughs> so uh, I will do it once I finish the, the sweater. Hopefully, I, as long as nothing else jumps onto my needles before that. Otherwise, we're in trouble. I forgot to mention that my only modification to the, um, uh, what is it? Actually, it's not even a modification. It's uh, the only difference I'm doing with this sweater and the one I've knit before, um, the Hayward sweater by Julia Hoover, um, is I'm knitting a size smaller because the one I knit previously was the second size in the pattern. And it is a lot of positive ease. Um, which I, I like positive ease, but it was really a lot of positive ease. So this one I've knitted one size smaller, but it still is a lot of positive ease. Um, so it's still going to be a nice loose sweater. Um, we'll see how the finished product compares to the one I've knit before. One question I get a lot is, um, on, on uh, Instagram or on my um, YouTube comments, one question I get is, um, how are the yarns I'm using in the sweaters that I knit? How are they holding up? And that's a great question because we all want to use a yarn that's wearing well, that's comfortable, that doesn't pill tremendously. Um, and uh, so I thought I'll answer that um, part of that question today. Um, I have my daughter's sweaters with me, all the sweaters I've knit for my daughter. And uh, as you can see, she certainly has a palette. <laughs> she has a color story. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll go through those because she does wear what I knit her. Um, and uh, so here, here's a pile of of her sweaters and um, we can go through them one by one uh, yeah this is her color story <laughs> right right here um, 
yeah, this, and uh, let's see, we'll start with this. This is the one um, that I knit for her first after a, a long time. Like, I mean, when she was very young, I knit for her, but this is the one uh, I knit for her when I started kind of sweater knitting again. Um, so this is her least worn sweater. And I think it's because of the color. It's not her color anymore, but she chose this color. But, but, uh, but actually what she did was she chose this color and we had to choose a corresponding color because for some reason we couldn't get this color anymore. But anyways, we're talking about how the yarn's holding up, not the color. Um, this is Feisty Fibers, they're worsted. It's a superwash, 100% merino, and it's milled in Canada. Um, I don't know if, where the fiber is from, I'm, but it says it's milled in Canada. Uh, the sweaters, it's held up really, really well. No pilling, no pilling at all. It's, um, I think it was a three ply yarn. Uh, I actually, I have notes. Um, the feisty fibers, it's plied. I don't know if it's a three ply, but it's a plied yarn. It's held up really well. Um, it has grown, the sweater has grown uh, since I've knit it. When she's worn it, it's grown. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, um, I mean, the yarn is held up really well. The only thing is I'm not crazy about superwash merino worsted weight because it's quite heavy and so it grows. Uh, but but yeah, as like if you want to know how it's held up, it's held up amazing. So that's that. Um, this one is the newest one. That was the oldest one. This is um, all. Um, Marine, it's a hundred percent superwash merino, actually, except the the top. The first one was merino cashmere silk, and then it's held together with mohair. So she has worn this a um, few times. Um, it, it's so far so good. Um, yeah, no pilling. Uh, you know. The mohair isn't going crazy on this or anything like that. Uh, the wear looks, it looks really good. Yeah. I'm really happy with it. I already spoke about what yarns were used in this, so I'm not going to talk about that, but it is mostly almost 100% merino held together with silk. Um, that's that one. Um, this is her ranunculus. And this is lichen and lace. They're, uh, let's see. Lichen and lace, they're superwash single ply merino held together with their marsh mohair, which is a um, mohair silk blend. Um, this is held up really well. No pilling. The mohair is not too crazy. Like the halo is there, but it's not like, going all over the place, kind of. It's held together really well. Uh, yeah. These have held together super well. Um, the, I believe the, you know, I can't remember if, oh, the single ply merino, it, it didn't look like it had a big twist to it um, for the mar uh, lichen and lace, the single ply merino. It did not have a huge twist to it. Um, it is a super wash yarn. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm really happy with the wear and tear on that one. This is um, the So Faded sweater by Andrea Mowry. This is knit with the remnants of that one. So this is Lichen and Lace's single ply, um, uh, superwash merino, 100% merino fingering. Um, it's held up really well. I don't see any pilling. Yeah. 
it's super soft like it's this fabric against the skin is is really really nice i have to say um it's it's uh let's see if i can do it yeah like i i don't know if you could see but it's it's held up really 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 well um really happy with this yeah so I glean my sweaters, but I don't glean her sweaters. And the reason is that my sweaters live in my closet where my gleaner lives and um, sometimes they get together. But her sweaters live in her closet and I don't go up and glean her sweaters. I just don't. Um, so these have not been gleaned. Um, this is the striped sweater by Andrea Lowry. This is knit in. The mohair is soft, uh, knitting for olive soft silk mohair, and it's held together with West Yorkshire spinners, Falkland and Falkland wool and uh, mulberry silk. So the silk content of this is quite high. Um, it's a very light, airy fabric this one created because they're both lace weight um, yarns that I held together to get a sport weight. Um, this she's worn, she's worn this like a ton. And it's, again, it's doing really well. The mohair isn't going crazy. It's not like the halo isn't all over the place. It's just, it's contained on the sweater. Um, this is held together really, really well. Uh, okay, I noticed a bit of pilling on the arm, arm part of it. So this would benefit, I don't know if you can see, but there's a bit of pilling there. Um, this would benefit from a gleaning. Uh, it's just on the underarm part, oh, sorry, like the whole length of the arm. Um, but the cuff and the cuff looks good, like it, it it's on both arms um the body is fine so this would probably benefit from a gleaning but it it looks very presentable um very very happy with this the fabric on this um then the last one is um this is the um what sweater is this uh I'm totally blanking on the name of the sweater. Oh, Nurtured by Andrea Mowry. And um, it is knit in Derurum Natura's Gilead, um, which is 100% merino, uh, semi woolen spun, and it's plied. I think it, it's a three ply or something. Um, and this is held up really well. I don't notice any. I don't notice any pilling at all on this. Yeah, it's held up super, super well. This is a worsted weight yarn. Um, yeah, it's held up super well. Here are the cuffs. Uh, I mean, it, this one could benefit from a wash, a, a, like a, a wash because the cuffs look a little, little dirty, but, um, but the, the sweater looks great. I will wash in a couple of weeks when the weather gets a bit warmer, uh, just because um, it takes a while to dry in the winter here um, after blocking. So I want to wait till it's a bit warmer, till the sun is steady, like a few hours coming through my windows and, and um, then just things will dry a little quicker instead of like three days or something. So I will wash these. Um, I'm really happy with the way her sweaters have worn. Um, so I hope that answers some of your questions. So uh, let's talk about acquisitions. Um, I bought some Cozy Posy yarn from the Knitting Loft in Toronto. This is the same base, um, the same yarn that I used in my daughter's um, fortune sweater at the at the yoke, the collar and the yoke. It's the fancy base, which is 
merino cashmere nylon. Um, and this color is called Moody and it's, I think it's showing up quite, quite well on camera. Um, it's super nice. I bought three skeins of it. I'm going to hold it with some mohair and make a sweater for you myself. I don't know which sweater yet. If you have any suggestions, message me. <laughs> three, three skeins of uh, fingering and I'll hold it together with some mohair. Um, I've decided on the mohair. I think it's the... I have it written down, but it's very similar color to, to this one. I forget which one it is exactly. But um, this, uh, they were kind of having, I think they were almost finished with, um, I got it on sale. It was a good discount because uh, they had only a few skeins, a handful of skeins left from, from Cozy Bozy. Um, who is a Canadian dyer from Ontario. And uh, I think they were waiting on new yarn from her. So that's why they were kind of discounting that yarn. Um, so I grabbed those and I went to um, Units here in Toronto and I got some, they were having a summer, not a summer, I wish it was summer. Um, they were having a spring yarn sale and uh, I went in, um, and I have to say, like, buying yarn online doesn't compare at all to seeing yarn in person and touching and squishing and choosing and seeing the colors. But I bought this lovely bouquet of yarn. It's so pretty. I'm so happy with it. Um, this is, okay, I had never heard of this yarn before. Autumn and Indigo Fibers, which is another reason to go into your LYS and, and um, look at yarn because you can see something that you've never heard of or never used before. This is Autumn and Indigo Fibers um, and it's 100% American Rambouillet. This is the color Valor. It's this kind of greeny color. This is Fog. Um, Adobe. Concord. And Damask. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure if I have a sweater's quantity. Um, We'll find out the hard way, <laughs> but I think I might do a striped sweater by Andrea Mali. My daughter's, my daughter, um, hers, she loves it. And I really love knitting it. It went super fast. I think because you're constantly changing colors um, and it's fun. It was fun to knit. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to make a full sleeve garment out of that one. But um, maybe a three-quarter bracelet length uh, sleeve or three-quarter, whatever, whatever that is. I think that's the same, bracelet, three-quarter length. And that's what I'm going to do with this. Um, I think this is a, oh, it says fingering. But to me, it feels like a more heavier fingering. So I'm going to hopefully, hopefully it'll work because the um, Stripe Sweater by Andrea Ramali, it, it calls for a sport weight yarn. So hopefully it'll work, we'll see. And I also bought on that same, same at the same shop units, I got Daylights. I got four skeins of Daylights, um, which is by Harrisville Design. And um, this is the color Bloodshot. Uh, and yeah, it has like a little bit of pink in it, like a kind of, I wouldn't call it tweedy, but because it doesn't have like, it's not quite tw tweedy, but it has that kind of like, it has a bit of pink and gray vibes in it. Um, I want to make myself a weekender. I love my weekender. I wear it 
a ton, but I don't love the yarn that I made the weekend in. Um, so I am hoping to make a weekend for myself and another one. Um, and I think that's it for today. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I hope, um, you know, you're all um, doing well. And um, I'm happy to see it's, we're inching hopefully towards the end of the pandemic. And um, happy spring, happy knitting. Take care, bye. Thank you.